<laughs> okay, so what is the difference between a healthy desire to look attractive and an unhealthy desire to conform to fucked up gendered racialized beauty standards? Is wanting to get laid a bad reason to work out slash lose weight? I have a friend, legit, who ignores his health and hygiene and uses the fact that beauty norms are constructed and oppressive as justification. It wouldn't be an issue, but he's clearly and actually just trying to oppress some things. How can I convince him that it's possible to be liberated and want to look attractive? First thing I would say is watch ContraPoints on beauty. Yes, 100%. That's a, again, as much as like ContraPoints, like you always want your favorite lefty to like somehow make a mistake. Well, not that you want, but like that usually is what We're happens. We're just fucking jealous, basically. Like she is amazing. Like we will have a conversation about fucked up beauty standards in the garage with over a cigarette. And then the next day she'll produce the perfect fucking video exactly explaining what She's we were so talking funny. about. And like, we are like, I full disclosure, I had a dream where ContraPoint retweeted one of our videos and it was like the happiest dream of my life. <laughs> Again, you may have seen that there's a cut here um, I can get into like the, the the the. My phone went out of battery. I had to recharge it quickly. I'm sorry. We should have said before, but Thanks I panicked. For me. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> but um. So look. Um. I don't know. I worry a little bit over your use of the word legit. That just being like, hey, that's definitely what they that they have issues, and yet they're not working through them. See, I thought legit meant that they were talking about themselves and just pretending it was a friend. I think that they're saying that it's just like. They definitely have some issues and yet they're not talking about them. Um, so, look, fundamentally, um, we are also called out on this all the time. The fact that we're a bit react, well, we're quite reactionary as to like our fairly stereotypical ways of, of like defining uh, what is attractive. I would like to think I'm the culprit in this and Rowan is actually way more open hearted no, on this. Th the point we make is that like, whilst there is like the queer feminist utopian vision of a world in which these things don't matter, we don't live in that world yet. And like, Yes, someone will find everyone attractive. And yes, like, you do definitely not have to change your aesthetic or anything for anyone else. And yet, there are, unfortunately, certain aesthetics, certain body types, certain fucking, like, colours of skin that, like, are seen as more attractive in our bullshit fucking society. Okay. Like, that is, a, that is a thing that we have to both work with and fight against, kind of, simultaneously. So... Okay, so I'll bring up two things there. One is like a very personal thing that like I had to deal with fairly recently as in like, look, apparently in like the the liberated left, like no one cares about burping because like we just burp, like who cares? Like no one gives a shit. It's like burp is like such a natural thing. And so we should be totally like- Farting as well. All of that stuff. And yet, yeah, okay. So I grew up like whenever from age eight to 15, I grew up in a, in a house where I was living, there was basically a kitchen and toilet in one end of the corridor, and then one bedroom in one and another end of the corridor, and then another bedroom in the other. One of them was for my brother, and the other one was for me and my both of my parents. And, um, and in the corridor, I was living with fairly, um, I suppose with like Marozi, like in, I think the Eastern hemisphere of my listeners will understand is like people that like, uh, kind of and anti fairly antisocial I know I hate to use this term but basically it was like people in their 20s and 30s that would spend their time drinking the corridor and like um, swearing and like vomiting and burping and doing all of that stuff because it was really their way of going through that particular day, which I completely understand, are like, you know, the sunflower was it, seeds and... Was that a form of like rebellion? As in like, f the world has fucked me over, so fuck the world back? I don't think there was a political project behind no, it. No, but like, I mean, subconsciously, or was it just like... Because they were like, you know, you see like teenagers spitting on the street and you're like, gross, but also you're like, they're no, doing that... No, it's just like, it's people that like, have, you know, have very, very little resources. They don't really have a tomorrow they, they don't really have like that many um, economic like um, prospects prospects as such and um, and I think they saw our family because we were like two parents and two kids as like this nuclear family little did they know that we had fuck all money or whatnot but like they thought that like to a, a way to in their very very sort of like you know just like sing mm. single dudes living in Lithuania like asserting dominance or yeah yeah I, I it's very difficult I could literally go into like marking the, territory a little bit a little bit um and basically they would do burping competitions which is like fine but like when you're like I don't know a teenager nine year oh not even teenager nine year 
8 to 15 when you're trying to sleep and all that you hear on the other side of the door and so fucking thin door because they're in the corridor is all just like just burping competitions is like it's difficult and so i have this whole thing where like i can't necessarily and oh it's so popular around the middle class squatting scene it's like people just burping and um i find it I hate to use the word triggering, but it kind no, of is. It's, yeah, it's coming back to a traumatic part of your past. That yeah. is literally what triggering <laughs> means, dude. Like. And so, and, and so, I really hate it when people like burp around me. Like, and it took me years to call people out on it. I remember when you did it when we were in Croatia and everyone talked about like one thing they didn't like, and you said burping, and I, I still remember that, <laughs> and like was like very aware of that. No, thank you, thank you. But um, again, no one else would ever necessarily even like say that that's a particular thing that they find a problem with and yet it was for me and so i wonder perhaps if if, if you know uh the person that is asking this question is 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 a bit triggered by a certain lack of whatever they would call hygiene or certain like aesthetical standards that they then like uh, um assign to a lack of trying or a lack of or lack of attempt to be part of a society or whatever. I mean, it's difficult, right? Because on the one hand, it's a class thing in terms of like hygiene and such. Like, you know, we like welcome homeless people and recognize a lot of people don't have access to showers and like cleanliness and such. There's one thing like acknowledging those things. And you can even go as far as embrace those things and embrace a lack of hygiene as like an anti capitalist project. That does not mean that people have to want to be in a shared space with you. Precisely. That's like, literally it. Like basic okay, to put my cards on the table, I have seen way more fairly posh people attempt these whole like oh you know I'm like so hygiene. Yeah, literally hygiene or just like not burping or like for me to look scruffy it's just like you know everyone else around me just has to like deal with those issues yeah. but for me it's just like chill because probably they have this whole rebellion against their parents yeah it's or a fetishization like of like the squat aesthetic like a fetishization of poverty that is very yeah. problematic like i we have so met those people mm. and like maybe your friend is not that but like i really the fact that they're being so defiant about it as yeah. well just kind of sounds to me like that might be it. Because on the, like on the one hand, like obviously personal hygiene is your choice. On the other hand, if you are sharing a space with people, and you and and I might add very importantly, if you have the facilities and the availability to make yourself not like oppressively unhygienic, to not use them is to say that I am dictating who feels comfortable sharing the space with me, and maybe they're okay making that choice. And like, yeah, like I would never, ever, like someone who doesn't have access to facilities, like call them out or make them feel uncomfortable for having like poor hygiene. Never. Of course. But of if you're course. making an active choice, you are then As acknowledging that you're making that yeah. space uncomfortable for other people. And that's on you, your friend, whatever. Like, yeah, 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 but yeah. I don't know. This is totally, again, us projecting. It's just that like I have, as I say, we, I think we both have met those people that like say, oh, you know, Western stereotypical values. And yet, and so I'm not going to. Uh, assign myself to them and yet they are rebelling pretty much against their break like the way that they've been brought up and yet uh, and so basically they never have to actually um, even assign you know deal with those issues look do I always want to be like made up like all cute little like blazers and like a bit of makeup of course I don't it's just that I know that if I'm gonna try and get a job like these are the sort of expectations that I'm gonna try and have to reach or like hope that hope to be accepted is that cool no it isn't and we're in our own ways of activism are trying to destroy that sort of capitalism way of thinking and yet i have found that people that can like just never think about this shit usually are never are always the people that um don't have to fit in in the in 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 that well, in that milieu this is the thing because I, I feel like there's two parts to this question one is about beauty standards and one is about hygiene. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. we are talking mostly about the totally, hygiene part totally, and like totally. that like if hygiene is not your choice, then never ever feel like bad for that. If you're making a political project out of having poor hygiene when you have the facilities not to, that's your cool. And some people might not feel comfortable in that space with you. And that's also their cool and completely within their right. And they are not bad activists because they don't want to share a space with someone who is deliberately having poor hygiene. Yeah. In terms of the stereotypical beauty yeah. standards, it's just like, look, we've all watched Love Island. We know what this, what, you know, we've all seen the magazines out there. We all know what the expectations are out there. Um, whether we conform to those or not is, is someone's choice. And I don't know, I worry a little bit about the question 
the person that has asked the question really relying on the fact that there is only a one way to get a hookup because yeah. of course there isn't jesus and honestly talked, come to know, think about it it's yeah. just like the most the, the the most long term the most like aspirational relationships that you and me n like know of don't rely on looks at all they rely on connection they rely on solidarity they rely on like yeah. maybe professional connection stuff communication like that. mutual care and respect and responsibility yeah like yeah I mean, we've talked in a previous video the one about um the one about the like uh, person who's worried about being overweight we talked about in that video quite a lot about the the distinction between the societal expectation of beauty and the personal needs and desires and we will i wish right now just quickly is that like if you want and feel comfortable and confident a certain way, don't fucking change that for society. And yet, of course, there are societal standards that we're all fucking aware of. We've all internalized and this and this and this, and we are all unlearning them. But if you want to fucking, you know, put on some lipstick to feel better, if you want to like wear a certain shirt or work out or whatever to feel better, that's totally okay too. One thing I will add is uh, you talk, this is the one about working out, right? Yeah, I will add that. Um, it's one thing to okay it's totally okay to want to get fit and lose weight in order to get a date in my opinion it's not okay to use a gym as a place to find potential dates and to like if a girl is working out in a gym and you think her ass looks good don't fucking hit on her she's working out she's doing her own thing but like yeah the whole thing of like we all simultaneously and this is possible by the way like some strands of feminism simultaneously look good and feel fit for ourselves but also i'm not a fucking bad feminist or a bad woman or a bad person if i also like it when i put on some lipstick and go out and people think i'm attractive yeah like fucking but then me. you see it's funny you say this because i also agree with you but then so someone underneath this exact video that you mentioned the Ooh. one with the with the the, the someone like with the boobs and the belly you should check that one out mm -hmm. like the the comment below it was really really potent and incredible and reading that i was just like fuck why the fuck do i even care about my looks basically the way that they referred to her was like kind of quotes saying oh was this one about their friend that wanted to get a nose job yes yeah yes oh, should we just read it out can we do that can look look fuck it deal with this loading stuff can you can uh, we do oh, so, so, so sorry you see this is the issues with being <laughs> tactical issues are a thing when we are yeah, filming this entirely <laughs> off phones like you know what if you want better fucking fund us paypal um okay your channel a bit just low yeah yeah, yeah. put me sex work into the i can know trend emotional labor bang codependent ah that one yeah and do we want the questions not the, video? the comments yeah shut up you should just read it out i think that says the counter argument to what we usually say and it's this this yeah. whole thing fuck it okay Okay, I hope this person doesn't mind, but they had a really good feedback and it yeah, is public. Yeah, it's so, the comments, yeah. okay. They said, in regards to body insecurity issues, I want to share a text I sent to my friend who was considering plastic surgery. The things I say to her are things I constantly have to remind myself of as well and often have a hard time sticking to, but it's important practice nonetheless. Mm. Us too. Yeah. So here's the quote For years, I seriously considered getting a nose job because of the bump on my nose. I always compared, and still do sometimes, my nose to other people's noses and got really obsessive and self conscious about it. I compared my nose to yours too, honestly. Yours? Mine? Ours? No, oh, I the think friend. this was a letter to Oh, the right, friend. right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, always looked before and, uh, I, I always looked at before and after pictures on Google of rhinoplasties. My mom actually supported me doing it. She was actually the one that put the idea in my head, which made it worse. She mentioned one day that I could get that fixed if I wanted to. The idea that I could have something fixed reinforced the idea that there was something wrong or not ideal with my appearance to begin with. I know it's hard to accept ourselves as we are, and I love you and I would never judge you for whatever decision you make because I know how hard it is not to pick ourselves apart. But I have found something powerful in trying to remind myself to fuck all the shit that's telling me that there's a fix for my flaws. There's a whole money making empire that feeds off of creative solutions to our problems. These meat suits we live in will one day die and rot away and what we'll be remembered and valued for is what we did with our lives. I looked at people like Rosa Luxemburg and Emma Goldman for inspiration. They did not feel fit the ideal of beauty for the time they lived in but they gave but they actually subverted those ideas and gave zero shits about how society thought they should look and act. When I get down on myself for my crook nose or my cellulite or my thick legs or my new wrinkles, I try to think about them and how they had no time to waste caring about stuff like that. It's hard, but it's a practice that I feel I can add more to our lives and confidence than surgery ever will. 
I love you, dude, and I think everything about you is special and perfect. And I think part of our responsibility to ourselves, to those around us, and to the next generation, is to set a good example for how to love ourselves and keep our focus on what we have, what we want to do with the short time we have on this earth. Oh, they give me shivers. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I was actually just like, BBC just created this incredible documentary on Anna Campbell. Not to say that she's not incredibly beautiful mm. aesthetically as she is, but like, made like a woman just put herself on the front line against fascism and she just didn't care about anything else much, though she remains to be beautiful as is. And fuck me, to be fair, that is the aspiration. We are stuck. And I will say, we are stuck in the limbo. I will say, as again, I will say as someone that's trying to fit in in this particular society where I don't have any inheritance, where I don't have anything to fall back into. I am trying to put myself in this particular society of, of, of being pleasantly looking somewhat, I don't know. And so, but the aspiration is being like Anna. So it's being like this person yeah. as well, being like Emma. And I'm <laughs> Anna. Emma. Um, yeah, th these women have, and more of us should do that, where we just put all of our label towards creating an anti-capitalist, anti-fascist yeah. so society. And but also, I would, like, I have a lot of issues um, in general and also, like, personally with the idea that, like, to be an anti-capitalist or to be uh, this or this or this anarchist squad or whatever, you have to, like, look a certain way and you have to conform to a certain aesthetic. And I often feel uncomfortable. Like, I in, like I enjoy dressing up in feminine clothes. I enjoy wearing lipstick. Oh, yeah, I enjoy absolutely. all that stuff. And then I'll go somewhere like the Anarchist Festival, a great event full of great people, no doubt. And I will wear my, like, sexy red top and my red lipstick. And I'll feel like I am seen as not serious or, like, why is she here or... She can't possibly have something to add I've because of this. I've been called out for not being crusty enough. Yeah. And like some of this is in my head and some of this is actually reflected in interactions. And so like it is a constant thing. Like so on that one hand, I was conforming to society's expectations of beauty, but I was not conforming to my scene's expectations of beauty. So it's like kind of like, you, you can know, never you win. Can never win. <laughs> <laughs> the conclusion with this question is you can never win. As in like we have full solidarity with the both of the sides of this question, mm. sadly. And um, like, yeah, I would be lying if I said I didn't want to look hot. Same. I would also be lying if I said that beauty standards were different in different places and you would find that there is the societal beauty standard, but there are also seen specific beauty standards that are also worth taking into consideration. Absolutely. And I would be lying if I said I'm not incredibly jealous for the I'll say women because I guess that's my aspiration. Women that do not care about this. They're mm. just fierce, incredible political um, forces that have made a dent in, 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 in the sort of scene that we're in. And they're remembered, they're not remembered by their looks. Actually, come to think of it, no one. No in, one is remembered by their no looks. No one is remembered no, like, by their looks. I remember that amazing activist in 1950 who was super hot. Like, no, that <laughs> never happens, no. right? It, the people that we, that are our aspira aspirations, mm. they're only remembered by the work that they've done. But again, we live in a misogynistic society and we live in a society where like, yeah, we can have our legacy, but we also have to get by on day to day not feeling like shit. And if that means I sometimes put on some lipstick or whatever, so fucking be it. Like, yeah, and it comes to think of it like the, 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 the sort of activist spaces that I've been allowed to, um, I think, or, or the sort of following that I've been able to, to amass really has really come down to, I think, not only my brilliant thoughts, but sometimes because like, I created a certain aesthetic around me that is not that that is not usual for the nerds and it's not usual for the left. Mm. You know, there's some something in between. So. And also like a point we've made in a lot of our previous videos when we're talking about how to date and how to be found attractive is there is a difference between looks as in physical beauty and aesthetic. And aesthetic choices can do so much to like make your looks more appealing for a certain totally. scene or for a certain person or for this or this or this. So like yeah. You know, we all choose what we wear at the end of the day. We all go to a shop and think, I want to wear that. And we pick it. And we all look at our face and think, I'm going to have this haircut or I'm going to have that haircut. Like, yeah, we, we look at Angelina Jolie and we go like, she made, she's like the 75 out of 10 scale. And then we go like, Brad Pitt? I don't think I would necessarily be into him that much. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's fine. But it's just so, like, yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not all that. <laughs> but, okay, so at the end of the day, I worry about your judgment of this 
particular person in terms of like you seem to be so um, convinced that they have issues I wonder what that is on about really because like some people are not necessarily into an aesthetical choice and that's but they would say if they think if that person is like claiming bad hygiene is a revolutionary thing to do but that's what we discussed at the beginning of the video when I was just like look hygiene is just like babes like kind of like oh Oh, I cannot believe. Okay, call a, call me out re- reactionary. Do it. I'm prepared for your trolls. Don't like anyone's thinking. Just don't. Yeah. Just don't. And you know what? Because I've had to deal with a lot of s- bad smells in the way that I was growing up, or also like yeah. not even you don't even have to fall into that space. You kind of find it like gross. And again, a lot of people and um, yeah, if like, you have them- are well into it. Again, may babes, the sort of stuff and the sort of smells I'm into, and I'm in a certain environment is a whole different conversation yeah and also if you want to like you know like fuck it call me out for being mainstream do it no but like if you don't have the means that is one thing and i would never ever disrespect someone for that but if someone is making that choice you know what maybe they'll find other people who also don't care about hygiene and they can both like go off and like celebrate how like liberated they are from the like tyranny of the nose but at the end of the day i have a nose and it is affected by you no but exactly what you said it's just like it doesn't mean that that person can't get a partner. They mm. totally can't. It seems like you have an issue with them. Yeah. Way more than they have an issue with enough. themselves. If you don't want to be Fine. in a space with them because they smell. Absolutely. I'm... I've made those choices. Yeah. I have made those choices. I have made to, made myself exit those spaces where I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. But like, that doesn't mean that those people won't find an, uh, an incredibly happily ever after yeah. they probably will but if they're probably saying way like, before us <laughs> if they're, but if they're saying like having good hygiene makes you reactionary i call bullshit same all right end of episode <laughs>